the LDS church may have had in its original founding a fullness in the sense that in some ways it was more integrated than what else was being taught at that particular time and place. But they have been just as subject to human error, fear, cognitive dissonance, disintegration and integration as any other group. Some have risen above, while others have actually fallen and lost some knowledge because they've prostituted themselves to the drug companies. No other dominant religion has prostituted themselves so much to the drug companies through their medical and legal cartel, the Mormon Mafia. No other dominant religion appears to be under such control, especially when you consider their power within the state of Utah. With so many people on antidepressants and other drugs, my father often said, drugs are drugs. I don't care if you get them from over the counter or the back alley, drugs kill. The doctor dealer drugs, as well as addictions that have come as a result of it, creates a sick, docile, disempowered, good little slave worker mentality with enough people that it creates more elbow room for the elite abusers to manipulate even the best among them. The Mormon mafia, just like any other mafia, they're just an extension of a much bigger group and problem. They fit the elite abuse profile just as much and in some ways even more than any other group. They are pro-AMA, pro-Rockefeller Foundation, pro-secret invisible government, which is the very thing they've been warned about the most in the Book of Mormon. Captain William Morgan's book and story certainly didn't diminish from Joseph Smith's description of the secret invisible government, the ancient Gadianton robbers in the ancient Americas. Perhaps it was written mostly for them. And I was taught to believe that they were the most righteous group in the world. So this is just to help them face their own cognitive dissonance. Well, there's certainly duality. Two opposite groups, even within the LDS church in Utah. It's still the over-the-counter and prescription drug capital and Prozac capital of the world. On the flip side, it's also still the herb capital of the United States. Since Joseph Smith, Ezra Taft Benson spoke out the most as president of the church who had more experience in government politics than any other. Again, he had been secretary of agriculture of the United States government. He had face-to-face -face experience with many leaders of other countries but also more clearly saw the political issues in his home state. He strongly warned the church members more than any other leader and said the whole church was under condemnation because of the secret invisible government in their own land and failure to erect their title of liberty, their strict law of peace, standard of peace, which was the covenant of the Book of Mormon. To weed out such corruption, it's clear why so many attorneys in the church are still resentful of Ezra Taft Benson. And thanks in large part to Ezra Taft Benson, who also supported several people like my father, there are still a lot of good people there. There's opposition in all things, and they're going through their own purification. That's what life is all about. It would be a big mistake to underestimate the good people in the LDS church because they develop their strengths from their challenges just like every other group. There are good people there just like everywhere else. And just as true, it's a big mistake to underestimate the good people of any lineage. We all have our strengths. One talent doesn't replace another. They empower each other. But there's a lot of LDS people who are totally pro-AMA as well as legal cartel whose subconscious has been programmed to look at medical doctors and attorneys as the gods of this world. And they're ready to believe whatever they say. And I'm not saying all medical and legal professionals are bad people. 
no one thinks they're a bad person, even if they're a murderer. And most of them have no idea what they're part of because it's been kept from them. So I'm not saying it's their fault. At the same time, we can see we're not saved in ignorance either. For many years, Utah's fake news media has had an ongoing hypnosis campaign for immunizing kids, which goes, Immunize by two, it's up to you. We haven't said enough about the power of media that supports the secret invisible government. As I've traveled around the country, some of the other states haven't fallen under the influence of the AMA so easily. One airport I was in about a dozen years ago was playing the local news for that state, and they were saying, are we going to keep giving our kids shots when the immunizations have only made things worse? Our kids' health has been diminishing. More kids die of cancer in particular, which is the number one killer for children across the board. And the thing is, I've never heard the news media in Utah talk that way at all. It is the truth, though. When kids are given immunizations, after they're born, all their lymph nodes in their body swell up. It's positive pressure blowouts all over the place. It creates what we call weak spots all over their body. This alone is the main characteristic we describe as the disease environment in the zero disease class. And as the energy comes out, the blood proteins lock, making them much more difficult to remove. And again, the zero disease class is a prerequisite to the laws of empowerment. It's our cornerstone for this program and all our other programs to properly understand what we're talking about. How can people go from integration, having a form of fullness, to disintegration? After pride cometh the fall. There's various levels of that. And as soon as people think they know it all, that they have the have all, be all of truth, then they stop learning. How can they have the have all, be all of truth and still have anything left to learn? That's the dilemma. But that attitude is still quite prevalent in many dominant organizations. I know. Sending the good old boys after my father didn't stop him. He eventually won all his cases until they killed him with the incident he had during what was supposed to be the very last hearing. And they had some serious cognitive dissonance they were dealing with when it came to even watching my father socializing in his local church meetings. So they decided to tell him that it was his hobby horse, and they told him to get off his hobby horse. This is how they talk to their good people who talk outside their box. They push many of their best people right out of their organization with behavior like this. I don't know how he hung in there. A lot of people like my father, who've been some of the greatest people that have integrated other things outside of their church, they start getting accused of having a hobby horse, and they get pushed out because they threaten the status quo. 